just outside Beijing, there is a town that's a tribute of sorts to all things American. This is China's version of Jackson Hole, Wyoming, a strange, sleepy place, a metaphor too for how America, once admired and emulated here, is swiftly falling out of fashion. Li Hainan sells properties here. The American style is not the main attraction, he insists. His views are typical too, that China is right to harden its stance against its biggest competitor. This visit comes as relations are the worst they've been in decades. It was initially scheduled in February and then postponed by this. That's my Air Force right there, buddy. The so-called spy balloon saga. But there are more serious issues to discuss. Taiwan, for example, and what the U.S. has called dangerous military behavior. This, a recent near miss in the South China Sea. China is a place where military might matters, where decommissioned hardware is now a tourist attraction, and people here support China's rapidly growing forces. The tensions ultimately boil down to an increasingly intense standoff for global influence and the distrust between the two now runs so deep it's hard to overcome. But the fact this visit is even happening shows there is at least a mutual understanding they need to talk and prevent things from deteriorating further. Indeed, there is a lot at stake, not least $600 billion of trade, mm -hmm. despite increasing numbers of tariffs and sanctions. There is this conundrum that on the one hand, US-China continue to trade with each other, they continue to need each other, but the geopolitical sort of competition means that there's always going to be a little bit of friction. Uh, I do think the business community and trade back and forth has been the ballast, has been sort of the evening point of this relationship for years. Blinken will stay for two days of meetings, possibly even with President Xi. There may be little chance of a serious breakthrough, but high-level contact is at least a start. And then I worked my way up and, and got the big break when Phoenix, Arizona called me and said, we want you to come down and work here. I worked 27 years as a broadcast journalist in Arizona, the leading face and voice of news in Arizona. Great. And almost that entire time, and Ed's going to know this, we were, me and my, and my co-anchor were number one. That, is, that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, I was making a pretty good paycheck. And then COVID struck, and like so many of us, we went, what the hell's going on? Something's wrong here. I finally lifted my nose off the grindstone after working since I was seven, because my family believed that you should work as a child. <laughs> and... Uh, I said, what's happened to my industry? What's happened to journalism? It ceased to become journalism. And so I, with my amazing husband, he's somewhere here, right there, amazing guy in the beard. He was watching me during COVID. They sent half of us home to work at home because we didn't want to spread COVID. And so uh, I would finish doing the news and I realized, wow, this is just a bunch of fear and division that's being pushed. And I don't want to push this on the people. I want to tell the full truth, not half truth. List, and then I worked my way up and, and got the big break when Phoenix, Arizona called me and said, we want you to come down and work here. I worked 27 years as a broadcast journalist in Arizona, the leading face and voice of news in Arizona. Great. And almost that entire time, and Ed's going to know this, we were, me and my, and my co-anchor were number one. That, is, that doesn't exist anymore. I mean, I was making a pretty good paycheck. And then COVID struck, and like so many of us, we went, what the hell's going on? Something's wrong here. I finally lifted my nose off the grindstone after working since I was seven, because my family believed that you should work as a child. <laughs> and... Uh, I said, what's happened to my industry? What's happened to journalism? It ceased to become journalism. 
And so I, with my amazing husband, he's somewhere here, right there, amazing guy in the beard. He was watching me during COVID. They sent half of us home to work at home because we didn't want to spread COVID. And so uh, I would finish doing the news and I realized, wow, this is just a bunch of fear and division that's being pushed.